Hi. Okay. Um, I, in part one of this talk, I talked about why I believe that the calorie theory of weight gain breaks down and how the body in normal conditions partitions sugar and starch so that you don't gain weight. In part two, we're going to talk about what happens when you are gaining weight and why the system might break down. So I told you that I used to be able to consume a lot of calories and this was because this partitioning system would send calories appropriately to either be burned or stored depending on my weight. What's happening in somebody who gains weight? Well, in somebody who gains weight, this partitioning system is basically broken. And we actually know what happens when the system gets broken. Uh, what occurs is that the muscle cells stop listening to the signal of insulin. So let's imagine that they grow a callus or become deaf to that signal. So say you, somebody who gains weight easily, eats this meal which has a lot of starch and sugar, maybe a breakfast of oatmeal and brown sugar and a whole grain bread and some jam and I mean, a tremendous amount of blood sugar that comes from that and your body appropriately recognizes that you're overweight and it appropriately recognizes that there's sugar in the blood so you now produce insulin. The system is still working very well. Uh, you're making insulin appropriately. But what happens is that when you make insulin and it attempts to get the sugar out of your bloodstream your brain may say, gee, he or she is overweight and we need to burn some of this off in the muscles, but the muscles suddenly can't hear that signal anymore. And because it's so important for the sugar to leave the blood, it's dangerous to have too much sugar in your blood, your body's only option is to shovel everything over into fat. So essentially you are trapped in a fat storage cycle. Now, this has some other implications that are really important for your health. Your body recognizes that it's not getting this sugar into the muscle cells anymore. And so it only has one way to deal with that. It, it makes an adaptation, which is your body says, gee, maybe if I start yelling at these muscle cells, I can get the muscle cells to open up. And it does that by starting to make lots and lots of insulin instead of that small amount that it made in the beginning. Um, the implications that this has for your health are enormous because when you make a lot of insulin, your blood pressure goes up, your cholesterol and triglycerides go up, uh, your appetite goes up, you have more cravings, and in addition, these little beta cells in the pancreas that normally put out insulin start to get tired and they actually start to burn out. And if they burn out enough, you will develop a permanent form of diabetes. So this is the reason that with obesity we see these other conditions, blood pressure, diabetes, uh, cholesterol problems, and so on. And I always add to my patients, and I'll add here, that insulin is a stimulator of growth of cells. And so we know that obese people have far greater numbers of cancers. And we believe that one of the reasons is because they produce this excess insulin, which tends to stimulate the growth of small cancers that other might, otherwise might be suppressed by the body. So um, the question is, number one, how can we solve this problem? Well, we actually can solve it fairly easily because if we don't eat foods that ask your body to make insulin, we bypass this system entirely. And when we eat foods that are not sugars and starches, we don't ask the body to make insulin uh, or certainly not to make very much insulin. And so we don't have this partitioning issue. So uh, that's a very important um, therapeutic step for everyone who's overweight, in my view, is to lower insulin by not eating starches and sugars. Um, so this leads me to the last part of this talk, and that's the question of why so many of us should develop this kind of an abnormality. We have about almost 70% overweight in the United States right now. So why would 70% of us be having a problem with this system? And I think the answer is really a simple and elegant one. And, and once I've said it, I, I hope it will make a lot of sense to you. It certainly has informed the decisions for my life. Um, and that is, if I gave you a lion, a lion cub, and I told you to put this lion in your backyard, and now I said, go to the supermarket and get food for the lion, it's starving, you would immediately go to the meat section of the supermarket and you'd bring back red meat. And why is that? Because 
it's completely intuitively obvious to you that this lion has been on the planet for millions of years and it has genes that run its programs and these genes have evolved to to eat meat and you know you can't suddenly change it to a different diet it doesn't have the capacity to eat another diet and you'd be absolutely right but what we've forgotten is that human beings are just like the lion uh, human beings are part of a species called the hominid species and we've been around for actually 2.5 million years on the earth and during that time almost all of that time we had an original human diet what I would call our lion diet and that lion diet was the diet of hunter-gatherers we were tribal people like Eskimos and Aborigines who lived out of doors and what we could hunt and gather and fish and pick is what our body understands to be food because our genes are the same as their genes and so it's pretty easy to figure out what those foods were if you lived out of doors you could find meat but it would be relatively lean because it would be eating its own natural food it wouldn't be fattened up by feeding a corn somewhere um, you could eat poultry those poultry would lay eggs so your body's good with that uh, there would be vegetable matter and fruit matter you could find fish and other seafood there'd be mushrooms and berries and nuts and maybe you could dig up a couple of edible roots here and there and that would have been essentially um, a primal diet so what's so interesting about that is that none of those foods ask the body to produce very much insulin at all and in that original diet there wouldn't have been any way to find sugar except for maybe some occasional honey and the sugar in wild fruit which is pretty low and there wouldn't be really any way to find very much starch because grain actually is a, pro a product that we only started growing about 10,000 years ago when we started agriculture it's just a blip in time so we can assume that we are uh, loaded up with an insulin system that expected to make insulin very rarely and that system is fragile and what's happened to us is that instead of making insulin rarely we live in a world where we are asking the body to respond to sugar and starch not just once a day but probably hundreds of times a day throughout a lifetime and eventually that sugar and starch processing system breaks down so what I'd love for you to do if you're watching this video is to give a try to eating a primal diet you can get information on many websites on the net you can get information from my book refuse to regain and um, I think you'll find that it makes a huge difference for your weight and an even more huge difference for the health for the rest of your life thanks for listening bye